We've got a machining demonstration for you here today. This is a high feed demo from Dorma Primer. I'm so excited to see this. Um, it's on a Herco machine, and this is the kind of machine you'd see on most subcontract machine shops. Now, what kind of part are we going to be going to be seeing today, Tom? Yep. So we're doing um, part of P20 steel today. So kind of almost like an oil and gas kind of part. So very representative of what you'd see out in the field in, in your uh, subcontractor. This is what you see on some <laughs> demos where it's like a really soft steel, and you're absolutely ripping through it. It's like. Woo! People yep. don't always cut materials like that, do they? No, exactly, no, which is why we chose it, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, before, without further ado, come on, let's get okay. the chips flying. So, you're going to do a quick tool change to the high feed now. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the high feed? What size is it? What are you doing? Yep. I mean, that is absolutely, I mean, look at the feed rates on that. That is absolutely moving. Yeah, oh so my God. this is a 50 mil SMGX, so 5.2. Uh, we're running this at 217 wow. and 1.7 mil a tube. 1.7 mil a That's so advancing two. quick, man, yeah. really quick. We're about 14 meters a minute on a table, so we're not hanging around. And some machines, I guess, some older style machines might, not, might struggle to keep that feed rate up. So actually, you're almost hitting faster than some, some machines might be able to, to go. Keep up, yeah, exactly, yeah. Absolutely. Obviously, you can dial it back on the older machine and you'll still be fine. Yeah, absolutely. Machine. One thing that I find interesting is people do uh, high feed demos and the machines are running super quick. It's really impressive, it looks good, but the metal remove rate isn't quite there because the depths of cut aren't, might only be kind of, some people might say tickling the material yeah. off. What's happening here? Yeah, so generally most people do a depth of cut of about 0.7 on yeah. a uh, high feed. We're running this one at one mil, so we're above that. You can go up to 1.5 if you want. So the metal room rate on this is about 550 for about there. 550. Yeah, so we're, we're flying through this. It's yeah. definitely up there, and it's it's one of those kind of uh, on a smaller end mill. It's nicer because you can get into to, to large to smaller radii yep. and do the kind of the big uh, mold and die type components where you're you're Z leveling down on a massive uh, block. And one of the things you got to think about when you're doing a massive block like that, you're Z leveling down, is about the tool life because yes. they're that's, they are long cycle time. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously this is where high feed comes in because you're getting that balance of speed of, and then obviously cost of the A solid carbide, high value item, insert not so much, so you're getting that perfect balance that you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. It's so nice when you do the mold and die. You can hear it so loud, <laughs> it's cutting really well. Um, when you're doing the mold and die pipe, it's so nice to be able to interrupt the cut, take it out, change the tips and put it back in again, rather than have to take the tool out, change the end mill, screw it back in and put it back in the machine. You can change the tips in situ if you're doing roughing like this, right? Exactly, yeah. So you're, you're speeding up all the process with the variables that can go through, yeah. So you're getting much, you're basically doing all we're doing now, getting more contact time with the inserts and less dead time. Absolutely. What would your recommendations be? If I was, I mean, we're running this dry right now in P20, it's quite a hard material. Yeah. What other materials would you be able to run dry? What would you recommend to use coolant with? Uh, I'd recommend mainly using for coolant, uh, so steel I'd run dry like this. For a uh, coolant, I'd use high temp alloy, so sort of stuff. So your nasty kind of harder materials I'd like to run with. Yeah, coolant, you yeah. definitely don't want to be running in canal dry, no way. But you could still use a high feed tool on, on in canal type parts. Yes, exactly, yeah, you can, yeah. Brilliant, okay, and it's just finished there now. <laughs> now we can relax a little bit. We'll have a quick look at the, at the part. Um, and look at that, it's, it's ripped out this, this kind of spigot form, which we're going to be yep. continuing with, the, with this demo yep. part. Um, and I love it, I guess you're leaving a real rough finish, so yes. you can then come in and finish it out with a, yep. a solid carbide. It also means that that end mill you're going to use uh, just for finishing, you're going to save the tool life on that as well, aren't you? Exactly, yeah. So the, the high value end, end mill that you're going to be paying anywhere between 100 and 150 pounds for, you're going to be maximizing the tool life of that as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so much cheaper option for roughing out big, big amounts, yeah. huge amounts of material. Yeah, exactly. Especially if you've got um, lots of batches to do as well, you're bringing that cost right down at that part as well. Absolutely. Low cost, high feed, but still, it's impressive. 